Good morning. So, today's lecture is uh, about a very popular and very interesting genre, the musical. Now, I am going to talk about music for two reasons. One is because uh, music all over the world speaks a universal language, we all know that. Also, musicals as a, a genres were one of the foremost genres that uh, gained enormous popularity, uh, especially when early cinema was on during the inception of cinema. So, be it Hollywood or Indian film cinema, there is no getting away with musicals and music uh, songs and dance and music in cinema. Now, uh, my lecture today is going to be divided into certain parts. I will be talking about the musical as a genre, generally speaking. I will also touch upon very uh, briefly on what is a sound and its importance in the overall thematic structure of cinema. Then, I will talk about uh, development of uh, and growth of music and uh, musicals of course, but also music and dance, song and dance situations in Hindi films. My uh, lecture will be continued in the second part as Hollywood musicals, because that is how it all started. So, Hollywood musicals as you know um, influenced the way we perceived situations on screen. Uh, on Indian screen of course, you know actors still sing and dance, we still have soundtracks of uh, films released and actors still lip sync to cinema, to songs. Whether our cinema is, uh, uh, is still, can it still be called a musical genre or whether it is just song and dance situation, we are going to talk about all this. The musical film is a film genre in which songs sung by the characters are interwoven into the narrative. This is what we have to remember. In musical genre, songs are interwoven into the narrative, unlike the situations that we often find in our cinema, where songs just um, stick out. They may be very popular, they may be extremely hummable, but they rarely carry the narrative forward. Strictly speaking, musical is a genre where songs take and dance situations take the narrative forward. This is the major um, difference that you should understand between musicals and the song and dance routine. We have to also know that uh, musical as a genre stri strictly speaking, it consists of a plot that integrates that necessitates musical numbers. The songs usually advance the plot or develop the film's characters. Uh, sometimes they may also serve to uh, break, to cause a break in the storyline and then that is called production numbers. Although usually considered an American genre or a Hollywood genre, musical films from Japan, Italy, France, Great Britain and Germany also have contributed to the development of the type, but of course, these are not as influential or as well known as the great Hollywood musicals. The first musical was also the first talking picture, the 1927 The Jazz Singer which starred L. Johnson and it introduced the sound era of motion pictures. The Jazz Singers was followed by a series of musicals as it usually happens in the film industry to capitalize on the novelty of sound. One of the few exceptional films of uh, the early period was the Broadway Melody. Uh, released in 1929, uh, 1929, which also won the Academy Award for the Best Picture. 
The musical film was a natural development of the stage musical because on Broadway musicals were an established and very popular genre. So, in films musicals were a natural development after the emergence of sound film technology. Typically, the biggest difference between film and stage musicals is the use of lavish background scenery and locations that would be um, not possible or hard to create or recreate on theatre or in a theatre. Musical films generally contain elements uh, which remind us of theatre. Performers often treat their song and dance numbers as if there is a live audience watching. In a sense, the viewers become the diegetic audiences as the performers um, look directly into the camera and perform to it. Music, as we know, stems from the very basic instincts of human beings and is one of the simplest forms of entertainment. Before cinema, before theatre, there was music in whatever form, in folk form, in other any kind of popular form, but it was there. It was very much part of um, our cultural heritage, universal cultural heritage. Therefore, as an earlier form of entertainment, film was heavily influenced by music. As we know, the early film was characterized by a number of theatrical tropes and once sound was introduced, it was but natural that it had to be a musical. So, therefore, the jazz singer was a musical and a very popular musical at that. With the passage of time, uh, there has emerged an internal contradiction in the idea of the movie musical. Stylistically, movies are made to resemble reality. We have been talking various forms of realistic cinema, the British new wave, working class cinema. We have been talking about Italian neorealism. We have also talked about um, you know, some of the earliest attempts made at realism in India also and in France, in Germany. So, where is the question of people breaking into song and dance ritual? So, when the uh, focus started shifting on depiction of reality as far as possible, um, the position of musicals also started dwindling. Musicals we know they rarely resemble reality given that they largely depict characters who express themselves through song and dance. So, this is not a very accurate picture of reality. Now, in this situation we will talk about our cinema, Indian cinema largely, but Bollywood or Hindi cinema in particular. Uh, I am not mixing Bollywood and Hindi cinema, there are subtle distinctions we will be talking about that also. We know that there is something called middle of the road cinema and also uh, parallel cinema, which is not a strictly speaking Bollywood. So, let us talk about in two terms, Indian cinema, which has always been very musical as well as Hindi film cinema. Now, uh, with not as much adherence to realistic portrayal in Hollywood, music achieves some much more acceptable and even our uh, critical role in cre uh, creating archetypes in a Bollywood film. When we talk about archetypes, you have already done plots, you have already done characters. So, you know what are archetypes. Now, you know that there are certain kinds of archetypes. So, uh, it is usually the heroine that gets to get, sing the songs and also the hero, but rarely a villain. Comedian or a helper may be, but rarely a villain. It is a rare, rare movie where you will find the villains breaking into a song. So, we have to understand that uh, music and dance in our films, they also reinforce the archetypes. So, therefore, um, Hindi cinema remains an exception to the decline of the musical genre. Okay? And still uh, in India and in Hindi cinema, most of the films that are made 
they may not be categorized as musicals, but there is an overdose of song and dance situation even today. We are not again, please remember, we are not talking about the middle of the road or the avant-garde experimental cinema or independent cinema. Again, let us consider how the majority of films are produced in the Tamil industry based in Chennai or Telugu industries based in Hyderabad. Uh, they are also musicals and have uh, very generous doses of song and dances. Um, some experts may feel that musicals in Hindi film cinema uh, have inspired a revival of the musical movie genre in the West and we will talk about this when we discuss Hollywood musicals at length. The song and dance sequences have now become uh, the dynamic essence or defining characteristic for Hindi films. I uh, talked about diegesis a few moments ago. So, the use of sound and music in film relates to the concept of diegesis and mimesis. Digesis is the telling of a story by a narrator as opposed to the enacting of a story through action which is mimesis. The classical distinction between the digesis and the mimesis, mimetic mode is uh, the difference between um, the epic poetry form and the dramatic form. So, the epic relates to stories by telling them through narration while drama enacts stories through direct showing or enactment or embodiment. In terms of classical poetics, the cinema is an epic form that utilizes dramatic elements. Therefore, this is determined by the technologies of uh, cinematography, camera angles and editing. Even in especially and temporarily continuous scenes, the camera chooses for us where should be looking at or who sh we should be looking at. In a similar way, editing causes us to move from one place to another, uh, whether it is the same space, same room or across time, across um, uh, time or across cities even or across countries. So, editing decides where we should be taken. So, this cut is a form of narration. It is as if a narrative, narrator tells us that meanwhile, you know, we are in the other side or other place of the town or the country. Now, it is for this reason that the story world in cinema is called diegetic. Elements that belong to the film's narrative world are diegetic elements. Thus, we refer to film's diegetic world. Sound in films is diegetic, okay? it, if it is a part of the narrative realm or the schema of the film. For instance, if a character in the film is playing a guitar or turns on um, a song and dance situation on television, then the resulting sound is diegetic, it belongs to the film. So, uh, this is what we understand by diegetic. On the other hand, if there is a music playing in the background, and the characters are not expected to uh, to be a part of it or they are not we are not told that they are also listening to it it is termed as non diegetic or even extra diegetic so diegetic in other words belongs non diegetic does not belong in the sense the characters are not aware of that sound so that's the difference between diegetic and non diegetic songs are diegetic let's again remember that songs are also used to link scenes in the story when a character progresses through the film through various stages for example uh, let's recall the famous song gonna fly now that is from Rocky. Okay, now, this is played non diegetically as Rocky makes his way through his training regimen. 
okay, on the top steps of the Philadelphia Museum of Art. So, this is a scene that has remained in our collective consciousness. However, this is an example of a non diegetic movement. Coming to Hindi film songs and music. So, I am talking about musicals where the um, story moves through songs and dance situations or through music. I am also going to talk about the major landmarks in the world of Hindi cinema, musical landmarks. The Hindi film music is a, as we all know, is a melting pot of influences from, influences from folk, classical, jazz, rock and various global influences. Hindi film music has always been situational and it is rightly said that there is a song for every situation. You are falling in love or having your heart broken or waiting for someone you love or the birth or death there is a song for every occasion. Of late we have been ha also having uh, films that function or almost appear to, uh, to be as if they are um, wedding videos, okay, but that is another story altogether. So, there is a song for every situation in Hindi films. The history of songs and music in cinema started with our first talkie and we have talked about this Alamara which was 1932 and again uh, hold your breath I am talking about a movie called Indra Sabha it had no less than 69 songs so yes 69 songs in one film Indra Sabha. The music company HMV cut out the first film disc in 1932 for the film Madhuri. This was the era when music directors came into or came from rather the classical tradition. They were trained in classical music. For example, people such as Govind Rao Tembe, Ustad Jhande Khan, um, whose uh, soon to be famous assistant was the great music director Naushad and also Master Dinka. So, these people were trained in the tradition of classical music. It was also a period of star singers, see when new films became talkies, it was necessary to have those people who could also sing their songs. So, we are not in the era of playback singing as of now. Okay. So, at that time we were not, we did not have the culture of having playback singers, stars sung their own songs. So, pe with, there were people like Naseem Bano, Bahari Sanyal, Durga Khote along with the greatest name of all K. L. Segal. The great directors of this time, uh, I am talking about the late 30s and early 40s and they were Mehboob Khan, V. Shantaram, Gurudat, Kamal Amrohi, Bimal Roy, Raj Kapoor, all these people had a keen ear for music. Guru Dutt of course is um, a little later than all these greats, but now we are in the era of playback singer, singing. Now, the, their films are noted for the excellence of their music apart from other qualities also. The classical, semi-classical and folk music from the north and the northwest especially found a place in the Hindi film music. Now. Um, we are talking about uh, the late 40s, early 50s and one singer who stands tall among all these giants of uh, cinema of playback singing is uh, Lata Mangeshkar who became the voice of all the prominent heroines of that time such as Nargis, Geeta Bali, Meena Kumari and Madhubala. With uh, Kamal Amrohi's Mahal and Raj Kapoor's Barsat, she consolidated her position as India's premier female singer. Now, here is a popular song from uh, Albela which is picturized on Bhagwan and Gita Bali. A film that is extremely unique in the history of Hindi cinema, even Indian cinema is Kalpana. It is a 1948 film. Um, it was made by 
the maestro, dance maestro Uday Shankar. It is a unique and an outstanding attempt to synthesize voice, music, dance and performance in films. It is it functions as a musical metaphor and is noted for the use of lighting and the sets and also uh, the brilliant expressionistic camera work. Kalpana's opening uh, titles assert that all the musical instruments used on the soundtrack are Indian and it is hopeful of being worthy of India's cultural heritage. There was a motive behind that film. The emphasis is on synthesizing modern and Indian attitudes and behaviors as well as taking pride in local traditions. Today Kalpana is a landmark film and was recently restored by Martin Scorsese who we have been talking about who is extremely interested in preserving cinematic heritage. The film was also screened at Cannes recently. So here is a wonderful clipping from Kalpana, Uday Shankar's Kalpana, the dance scene. In 1953, Indian government created the Sangeet Natak Academy, where the main objective was to promote theater arts in India, particularly theaters such as the Marathi, Tamasha, um, the Nautanki and the Bengali Jatra. The 50s was a momentous period, you know we are talking about the golden age of Hindi films. And it was a period when color was introduced. Some remarkable movies are Mother India, Janak Janak Payal Baji, and Leader, and also Ganga Jamna. We have been talking about these films all along. These films are known for their high production values, performances, as well as music. Mehboob Khan's Aan was an all color romantic drama with Dilip Kumar playing a Hollywood style swashbuckling hero. Okay. So, the music was by Naushan and here is a song from Aan. Music of this period is also noted for the high quality of its lyrics. See, generally we talk about the declining quality of lyrics in Hindi films. This was not always the case. Once upon a time, the greatest minds collaborated on cinema, because cinema was considered um, a high form of art. Okay, we still have certain uh, filmmakers who are making excellent films and not just uh, massy entertainers. Although uh, as cine enthusiasts, we should have nothing against massy entertainers also. But if you are talking about, about um, massy and very high bro, then there was a time when the greatest of all poets were uh, penning Hindi film lyrics as well. So, one such great was the poet Sahir Ludhyanvi, who wrote some of the most memorable songs for Guru Dutt, especially for his film. Piyasa, which was 1957 film. And then we had other renowned lyricists such as uh, Kafi Azmi, Shailendra and also Shakil Badaini, Majru Sultanpuri, who all did excellent work at that time. The 50s is also a time, uh, so we have been talking about that, the great uh, stars of that period, Dilip Kumar, Raj Kapoor. Devan and all their films are unique for their music also apart from other factors as well. Um, now I am talking about uh, the 50s and the great rebel star Shami Kapoor whose arrival on the scene heralded the emergence of a new kind of a hero. Shami modeled himself after the teddy boy image along with Elvis Presley persona. This new kind of hero made it important to introduce a new kind of music. So here is a, a very interesting song from um, one of Shami Kapoor's uh, earlier hits, Dil De Ke Dekho.
the great composers of his time, uh, we were talking about Naushan, but then there were also greats like Shan, S. D. Burman, O. P. Nayar, and Shankar Jaikishan. Shankar Jaikishan shot to fame with Raj Kapoor's Barsat and revolutionized the Hindi film music. Their film for their song and music for Barsat was a ground breaking work. Music started breaking away from classical tradition and became more accessible and suited for the tastes of the masses. Here is a song from Barsat, Shankar Jaikishan. The other great of this period was S. D. Berman, whose compositions were often influenced by his huge repertory of folk tunes from Northeast. Uh, he is now mostly re uh, remembered for the compositions he did for Bimal Roy, Devanan, and also Gurudat. Here is a remarkable song and dance situation from Jewel Thief. Jewel Thief directed by Vijayanan and starring Vajanti Mala and Devanan and music by S. D. Berman. Watch this brilliant uh, scene, a uh, brilliant sequence and see how performance, dance, music, rhythm, choreography and sets all get synthesized into something so wonderful. Opinayar is another great uh, name from that period. He is a star composer in the truest sense of the word. He is often called the rhythm king of Hindi cinema. So, before R. D. Burman, there was Opinayar. Opinayar regularly teamed up with Rafi, Shamshad Begum, and Asha Bhosle and successfully composed for actors such as Devanand, Gurudat, Shami Kapoor, Joy Mukherjee and Biswajit. He is remembered for his um, folksy songs, although he did uh, try his hand with classical uh, um, music as well, but that is that was not too frequent, although he did everything most brilliantly. So, here is a song from Mere Sanam 1965 movie. We are in the mid 60s now and this period saw the emergence of music composers such as Kalyanji Ananji and also Lakshmikanth Pyarelal. Lakshmikanth Pyarelal struck gold with films such as Parasmani and Dosti and then continued the success streak with films uh, such as Amaragwar Anthony, Bobby, Roti, Roti Kapla or Makan, Sargam, Kranti and Kurs. They were a constant favorite of directors such as Manmohan Desai, Manoj Kumar and Subhash Ghai. Lakshmikan Paralal are credited with giving us the maximum number of hit songs during the 70s and also the 80s. And then I come to one of the most beloved and popular music director of all times, the great R. D. Burman. R. D. Berman's influences included jazz, Latino, folk and several others. He was an avid absorber of cinema, of global cinema, global music. Though he started off with a film called Chote Nawab, which did not do well, How, although his uh, music was noted, his ground breaking work came with Devanand's Hare Rama, Hare Krishna. He introduced a new kind of a sound to Hindi screen with a new sensibility and also new musical instruments. He also gave importance to sound and orchestra including background music. Watch his Yadon Ki Bharat as well as Shole and you will find that he worked magic with the background scoring as well. The 70s was also the period when Amitabh Bachchan dominated the scene. With his intense brooding image of angry young man, music and romance took a back seat in cinema. However, we have memorable music in Bachchan films also such as Kabhi Kabhi, 
डॉन मुकद्दर का सिकंदर याराना एंड सिलसिला आई लाइक टू एंड विद दिस मेमोरेबल सॉन्ग बाय आर डी बर्मन विथ द टू ग्रेटेस्ट सुपर स्टार्स ऑफ हिंदी फिल्म राजेश खन्ना एंड अमिताभ बच्चन इन नमक हराम दिस इज़ अ ऋषिकेश मुखर्जी फिल्म ऋषिकेश मुखर्जी द ग्रेट डायरेक्टर हु ऑफन कोलेबोरेटेड विथ आर डी बर्मन इन सेवरल फिल्म Thank you very much. We will continue with our next class on Hollywood musicals.